Welcome to the second video tutorial regarding the Neptune Application Designer and the SAP UI5 framework. In this tutorial we will focus on the navigation and the communication with the SAP backend through models. This model view control architecture is the feature that differs the most from our earlier frameworks and perhaps the most important thing to have a good grasp on before you start with coding SAP UI5 with the Neptune Application Designer. We will use the Neptune Flight UI5 application for, the for mobile as a reference. And you should have this application installed in your system. So let's have a look at the application. The application consists of an app controller and five pages. We will focus on the home page or menu page, the book one page, which is basically a selection screen, and the book two page, which contains the results of a search. To give you an idea of the end result, I'll do a quick preview. The home screen consists of two tiles for different navigations. I'll click the booking tile and I enter the selection screen with different input fields. And a search button. And here you can see the result of the search. First, I wish to show you the backend logic. Click on the application tab and you can see that the Neptune application is connected to an application class. The class builder button takes you into transaction SE24. For a class to work with the Neptune application designer, you need to add the Neptune server interface and you are then inheriting six methods. With SAP UI5 you will only need to use the handle on AJAX method. Another important thing for the application class is the attributes and for SAP UI5 all data that you wish to expose to the client or read from the client are public structures like this global structure here or internal tables based on table types in the data dictionary. Let us go back and see how we connect the backend data in the designer. On the general tab of all container elements such as pages and certain other controllers like lists, selects and graphs, uh, etc., you have an option to bind a model source. For ABAP developers you only need to think of these as the public structures and internal tables I showed you in the application class. When you press the bind data button in this instance on the home page, you can see that I have bound the global structure and now I have access to fields that will help me search for flight bookings. The AJAX ID is used by the handle on AJAX method on the server so it knows where the request came from. Next to the AJAX ID you have a button for sending additional models or receiving models from the server. Note that I opted to receive data uh, in addition to the home page for the first booking page and uh, select for airline selection. In the attribute tab 
there are two very important attributes regarding models. Set enable cache and set init load. On the set init load, you can decide if you want to fetch the data online from the local cache or online if the local cache is empty. You can of course leave these attributes blank and fill the model data from other events. As we have decided to get data online from the server, let us do a preview and see if these models are loaded online on startup. I'll then use the preview without the wrapper. I personally prefer to use Chrome as a browser as it has an excellent developer console. I right click and choose inspect element. I go to the network tab and I refresh the page for the initial loading. In the Neptune Ajax call I can see that I have loaded several models. And these are loaded with JSON data from the server. The booking search page is connected to the global structure and it includes a list and this list has input list items and since the parent is uh, connected to a model we can bind attributes to the fields we wish to send to the server. The airline select has its own model and we can assign the relevant value field and label field. As you saw in the preview, there was a search button in the footer and on the press event we have added a Neptune specific JavaScript. The syntax of this JavaScript is fairly easy. It is either get online or get cache and then the name of the controller you wish to load data to. In this instance it's the list booking which is the result search list and this list is bound to an internal table and in the AJAX call it both sends the selected data for the search and receives the list booking and it has an AJAX ID that tells the server to perform a search with the selected values in the attribute tab, the navigation to this page is added to the AJAX success event. This means that the data is first loaded to the client before the navigation actually takes place. In this way you avoid, uh, avoid any flickering in the app. Here we have added uh, a standard list item and we have bound it to the data that we wish uh, to present to the end user. Also we have used the format data function to add some conversion exits to the data presentation.